time for a special. For this special, I'm going to be combining three of my interests, food, motorbikes, and adventure. As an Englishman and a biker, it is a mathematical certainty that my taste buds would love fish and chips. So I'm going to be doing a review of the number one fish and chip shop in the UK, a place called Crispy's, based down in Exmouth. It's about 210 miles away. However, I've heard their fish and chips are fantastic. I'll be completing this journey on my Suzuki V-Strom 650 XT, a 71 brake horsepower adventure star motorbike, which may not be the fastest bike in the world, but is an absolute workhorse and capable of getting me down. I have no idea where I will be sleeping tonight. I'm taking the hammock, I'm taking the sleeping bag, I'm taking the top, I'm taking the bivy bag. We're just gonna wing it, see where we end up sleeping for the night. Hopefully we survive, hopefully we find somewhere, and it'll all be good. Anyway, let's get this show on the road. See the sea! I don't know if that's coming through on the camera. So we're about an hour away. Okay, so we've had the lowdown from Chris on recommendations of what to have. They do Battered chips? Lightly battered chips? What kind of chip shop does lightly battered chips? I am so excited to try those. So Chris, he, he, he said he's not really a fish man. So uh, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know what's wrong with the guy. I mean, he has the best fish and chip shop in the world around his corner and he doesn't eat fish. So he has a battered sausage. So I will be trying a battered sausage, cod, uh, and apparently I can go 50-50 on the normal chips and the battered chips so we'll be giving them a go I think uh, how we're we doing on time it is 10 to 7 so we've got about two hours till sunset uh, so we'll get this done quick they have given me some locations of wooded areas which they think would be suited to my needs however um, the area that they said is probably best you know there are reports of adders at the moment so um, you know not something you'd usually worry about uh, I had a quick Google as well and um, you know they are they are venomous they are our only venomous snake it seems um, and you know when googling it all it was saying that generally people don't buy don't die from an adder bite I don't like the word generally in there though, so um, I'm not sure, I, th I think I probably will end up there if it's suited when I, th when I, when I go and check it out, because of the proximity, however, you know, that is a, that is a little bit of a worry, oh look, lovely sea down there, okay, so it should be just to the right, around here I think, Uh, yeah, it says turn right, and then we're pretty much there. Ooh. 
I think this must be a, a record for a, a distance to travel for fish and chips. I don't know what my distance actually is. It was 205 miles originally. Uh, however, I've had to go a very, very different route due to, uh, due to traffic problems. Oh, I bet I can smell fish and chips. Right, let's just keep an eye out for it. Crispy's here on the left. Oh my life, look at the queue! <laughs> There's a, a massive queue! Do you think I can park in the church? I probably can't. Uh, let's go in there just to turn around though. My God, there's a huge queue. Look at it, it's out the door. Okay, this isn't good. I need to find somewhere to park. Okay, so we are here. There's Crispy's with what looks like about 50 people in it. 50 people in a fish and chip shop. I don't know how I'm going to eat them. There's not even like a bench in the church. Okay. I may be eating them here on my bike. Okay, let's go in, see what's going on. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to film in there due to um, due to how many people are there. It's a little bit, be a little bit awkward. Um, all right, let's go in, get me order, and then uh, I'll come back to you when I've found somewhere. Okay, so the queue went down pretty quick, but there wasn't really anywhere to, there wasn't really anywhere to sit. So I am sitting in the green area of the church to have my fish and chips, which is all right. There's cars going past, people are looking at me odd because I'm sitting down filming myself eating fish and chips, but hey ho, it's just one of those things. So I'll show you what I got. So there we go. There's the uh, cod, little sausage, uh, battered chips and standard chips. Got a couple of sauces and a couple of drinks as well. Um, and there's their advertisement there. So let me flip the camera again and give you the first taste on camera. Okay, so I think I have to go with one of the battered chips to start. They're <laughs> good. <laughs> they don't taste like battered though, they're it tastes like mm, fluffy chips. Let's try a normal chip. Normal chips are good. Normal chips are very good. I think they're actually probably, I prefer the normal chips to the battered. The battered are nice, there's something different. Let's have a bit of fish. Very wonderful fish. I just had a local walk past and say something to me. Don't know what he said. And let's try the um, the battered sausage as recommended by Chris. Mm. All very good. Um, not mind blown. It's fish and chips, but it's very good fish and chips. I like it. I'm going, to, um, I'm going to eat this, turn the camera off, because I am getting weird looks. Now I'll talk to you again when I'm back on the bike.
Cheers. Okay, so I've had my fish and chips. Now, best in the country? I, I don't know, it's really hard to say. They were good. You know, I feel I've had better though. There's a uh, fish and chip shop uh, that I used to go to in London called, oh, I forgot their name all of a sudden. Um, but they were, they were fantastic. And these were good fish and chips. Don't get me wrong, they were good. However, best, I'm not sure. I did enjoy them. The, uh, the battered chips were, were good. They were kind of like a little bit more crispy, it seemed, and therefore a little bit fluffier on the inside. I still prefer the normal chips, um, but, you know, a nice experience nonetheless. Shame there was anywhere to sit down and uh, really get the review going. Uh, but, I mean, I don't know what else there is to say, really. The fish tasted lovely and flaky. I'm not a food reviewer, really, so um, I'm just someone who likes food. But, um, yeah, all, all good. But the exciting bit now, I say exciting, but I'm always a bit nervous at this sort of part of the adventure because it is the adventure part. We need to find somewhere to sleep for the night. Now, oh, I figured a car park, you know, one of the country style car parks uh, out in the woods, you know, is the way to go because I could be close to my bike and I really want to sleep in a hammock tonight and it's it's pretty discreet uh doing all of that i think which is the aim of the game however as i mentioned before car parks are a little bit of a worry for the um for the doggers uh for the american viewers or viewers from overseas who are wondering what i'm meaning when i say dogging or doggers so dogging is an activity i think very much specific to the uk whereby um, consenting adults will meet in car parks at night time, flash their lights, wind down windows, you know, do all these little codes, which mean that uh, they're inviting others in to the, the fun times, effectively. Which, you know, all well and good, but um, I'm on a bike though, so, you know, I, I, I think they'll know that I'm not one of them. I think dogging, you do have to be in the car. Um, I suppose unless you're someone who is looking to be invited in, then you don't need a car. But I, th I mean, it's just, but it's just not what you want to be facing when you're camping, is it really? Um, so I'm going to be scouting out some locations.
is looking good. There's a dude there, which is a little bit of worry. Now this could be a winner. Okay, I think this is it. I'm gonna get sorted. I've got a little thing I can put down. I need to find that. I think, I think this will be it. I'm a bit annoyed that guy saw me turn up. Bike feels okay there. Okay, so I'm gonna string a hammock between these trees. I might do it till a little bit later and hope that goes okay. All right, I'm gonna get sorted. See ya. Okay, so I'm just uh, setting up camp. It's kind of the perfect spot in terms of the way it looks. You know, the fact that I can get my bike down here and everything. That guy's disappeared. I don't know where he's gone. It does sound like there's cars over that way and cars over that way. So you've not seen me pointing there, but basically cars not too far away. Let me show you my setup so far. I'm still um, getting everything together. Okay, so this is, this is how it's looking. I've got my bike there. I'm just unloading stuff at the moment. Here's my hammock. So, it's a bit tight on the trees, but not too bad. I need to put my under blanket on, but that's all set up and that should be okay. I've put the tarp over as well, just one side at the moment, but I'll put the other side later um, because it might rain. I don't know. I don't think it will, but just a habit of doing it, I suppose. But, um, but yeah, an all right location, really. This could be great. Or if I get disturbed, then it'll be bloody awful. But so far, so good. Okay, crows earlier on. I think they've gone to bed now. But all right looking location. What, um, I'll have, I'll put the kettle in a minute, have, have a drink and, um, then get tucked up for the night. I put headlight, um, batteries in my head torch. So that is now up and running. Um, and I just want to take this moment as well to say thank you for subscribing. Um, it's been really good actually. Really nice. Obviously I've been doing a lot of the bike reviews recently. Um, still loads of more than more of them to come. Um, but also want to be doing more of this adventurous type stuff. Um, maybe longer ventures, maybe slightly better planned, I would say, be good, because um, it's fun to do it. But I really appreciate all you guys hitting the subscribe button, even if you just watched the video, you know, and, you know, liked it or commented anything. I mean, it's, um, it's really nice. Um, means a lot. And a thousand subscribers, I'm over the moon. Um, I was going to be doing this video you know, a few weeks ago, uh, around the time I hit the thousand. Um, however, it was one issue after the other. I had a puncture on my bike. Then my girlfriend ended up rescuing a bat, which I had to look after for a weekend. Don't ask, absolutely ridiculous. Um, and this was the first weekend that I've had free to do it. Shame about the fish and chips. They were good, but didn't blow me away. Um, so, so yeah, but I think fish and chips are very much a, you know, a, a personal thing. Everyone likes their local fish and chip shop. And it wasn't, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. It was just, you know, it wasn't amazing. I don't know how many miles I've driven to have those fish and chips. 240, I reckon. Something like that. Not sure. But, um, but yeah, for me, th thank, thanks again for subscribing. I, I, I'm going to say it too much if I'm not careful. But, um, 
you know, it's uh, it's uh, it's really nice. It's really nice to hear what you guys are up to and what adventures you've been on. A few people have commented on the Dartmoor one about adventures they've been on. And people giving feedback about bikes and everything, um, and I've been taking them out. So it's good. I appreciate it. Anyway, I hope you're all well. And uh, I'm going to get on, make camp. I might not make another video uh, tonight. You might see me in the morning. We'll have to see what is going on. Dirt bike just took, just went past. They're on the main road, he didn't look in. And I'm going to put another tarp in at the front of the bike so it's not as visible from the road. I hope it's all right. It's not ideal. Literally take this location, put it somewhere absolutely silent with no one around, then it's ideal. But at the moment, I don't feel quite secure. But I have brought my own axe this time. Where is it? I don't know where it is. It's somewhere in one of my bags. So I've got an axe. So if someone approaches me or I hear someone rushing around, I could be the crazy axe man. Um, yeah, take it, take it. My tips from the crazy axe lady in Dartmoor. Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm rambling. I'm gonna get on and uh, catch you a bit. Morning, guys. I survived. I'm speaking a little bit quietly because there's another vehicle not far away which uh, came along in the night. Disturbed me a little bit. I don't think they know I'm here though. So I'm trying to keep quiet at the moment. I'm just going to show you my camps out very quickly. Okay, so this is where I parked my bike up, as you saw me coming in. Uh, so I put a, uh, a top over the front to make it less visible. There's a can there I need to pick up. Because then that vehicle there came in at about half 10, 11, something like that and they were, I don't know, I'm not sure what was going on with them um, my new helmet, by the way, I'm hoping the audio sounds good on that this is going to be my dedicated filming helmet uh, with the mount at the front that I had problems with I had problems with that yesterday so I'm having to sort that out a little bit more so, here's my camp um, my trusty DD Frontline Hammock, which I absolutely love. I string it up with the whoopee strings, whoopee slings, and then a top over the top, which is going down just to one side. But if it rained, I could have popped it over. However, because they were there, you know, I was keeping an eye on them for, for quite a while. Um, and then uh, yeah, had a cup of tea, uh, a cup of coffee even, I'm going to have some breakfast in a minute, um, and probably head off, let me flip the camera. It was funny because, um, because yeah, they turn up, and they drive in, and obviously as they're coming into the car park, the lights are shining all around, so I'm hiding underneath the corner of the, um, the hammock because I don't want them to see my face because my face would stand out whereas the hammock's green so I might not pick it up in the same way and then I sit upright and I'm sitting there thinking to just trying to get a feel for them and see what they're like and everything and I literally about half hour before I text um, my mate who was around here and also text uh, my girlfriend as well I would sent my three word location um, I'll give a link to that below if you've not heard of that it's a really good way of giving a pinpoint location of where you are basically the entire world has been broken up into three meters squared and each square has three words associated with it which aren't related to the ones next to it it's just an easy way to quickly um, uh, tell someone where you are accurately so anyway, I've sent that over, and I'm sitting there just watching them. And all of a sudden my phone starts vibrating, and I realise that it's uh, probably my girlfriend or my mate replying 
to say, yeah, I've got that, no worries. But I can't look at it because then the screen will light up on my face. So I'm just sort of ignoring it, trying to be dead quiet. And then, and then she starts ringing me. So my phone starts blurting out. Turn down for what? Which is my current ringtone. So I have to quickly turn it off. And then I'm just there like, panic, they don't shine any torches over this way though. They, but they definitely didn't know I was here. Because they were, I don't know how they didn't hear the phone. They must have been inside at the time. Because, yeah, they were kind of, uh, uh, they were engaged in things you wouldn't if you knew someone was this close to you, I think. Um, yeah, and I, I, did, I, I just got a weird feeling about it all. I just wanted to, you know, be very much undetected. You know, it's been nice. Like this morning, I've woken up and, you know, it's nice when the sun's coming up and you can see things again and the birds are starting to sing. But this location is not good because of that reason, because they turned up and I probably only slept about an hour, an hour and a half maybe which was a bit broken. Um, literally any time a noise came from over there, I was waking up again. Um, but, but yeah, it's good. Um, and I'm gonna carry on for the morning and uh, catch you later, cheers. Okay. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <coughs> so I couldn't really explain fully because uh, I didn't want those guys to wake up in here, but. <coughs> Sorry, bit of a cough. So I couldn't really explain fully because I didn't want those guys to, uh, to wake up in here, but th they literally turn up, um, full lights and everything. You know, so I'm hiding and then I'm just trying to keep quiet so they don't realise I'm there. Had no idea what they're like. I can hear them chatting, I can hear a woman, I can't hear a bloke but she's, it sounds like she's talking to a bloke. She's then saying something along the lines of, you know, she's got no more money left. She spent 350 quid in the last week on him. And I'm the thinking, okay, you're in a tiny cheap van that you're living in. Oh, look at that lovely pond. You know, how are your expenses 350 quid a week? So then I'm thinking, they're junkies. They are full on junkies, living in a van. So I'm then a little bit, a little bit worried. I'm thinking if they see me, they're gonna come over and cause me a bit of aggro. Now, I've got the ax and all that sort of stuff, but my approach in life is avoid uh, these sorts of things as much as you can. So, So yeah, I'm then trying to be dead quiet. I'm like, my eyes are just wide open, just staring over towards where they are, just trying to keep an eye on everything they're doing. She goes out and starts wandering around at one point, and I'm like, oh crap, she's got to find me. Um, but she doesn't, and then they're going back and everything. Uh, then obviously my phone goes off, turn down for what? Ba -ba -ra -ba -ra -ba -ra -ba. Uh, but I, I, I don't know how, but they, 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 they then don't, you know, they, they don't seem to realise and, and come over or anything. Um, and then, what was that noise? It was just a bit of a funny noise just then. Um, and then, um, uh, so I then, I can't help it, but I, dr I drift off to sleep a tiny bit. And then I start snoring, which then wakes me up. <laughs> and I'm doing that a couple of times really uncomfortable because I can't really move around a lot and it's quite handy to move around in a hammock to make yourself comfortable um, and then and then they're shagging you know, for about I don't know three minutes or something like that and I'm like okay they're gonna go to sleep now uh, once that's done you know so afterwards it all goes a bit quiet I'm like okay they're sleeping now I can then relax 
um, I drift off uh, for probably I don't know 20 minutes or something like that I wake up and they're at it again <laughs> so I'm like oh Jesus so another three minutes something like that um, and then they're at it again afterwards I, I, I don't get it you, and you saw the van when I went past it's this tiny little van I think they were inside the van at one point I think they were outside the van at another point I'm there just thinking oh Christ I really hope they don't find me now because they'll be thinking oh hello why, why are you creeping up on us trying to watch us do xyz well i'm literally just in my hammock so i'll be like no 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 no. there's a hammock here look i'm uh, i'm camping i was here before you got here um but you know everything can get a little bit in the dark things can just get a little bit unpredictable in those situations not that i've been in that situation before apart from the axe lady last time never been in a situation quite like this this one um but yeah, so uh, a bit of a worry, really. So <laughs> I actually, I, I didn't even have anything. Uh, I didn't even end up making a uh, hot drink last night or anything, because uh, they turned up right when I was, you know, just having a, a, a little rest. Um, so <laughs> really interesting night, and, and, and literally busting for a pee as well. I couldn't go for a pee for about three hours because I was worried they were going to hear me. Um, so, yeah. not good, not good. I don't, I don't know what the solution is to motorbike camping. I, I don't know if anybody has any tips or advice on things that they do, but getting your bike places when you're wild camping, it's just not as easy. I just feel a lot more exposed um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I could, they could, if, they, if they'd wandered a different way, they would have found me and, and, and well uh, whatever would have happened would have happened um so I, I i don't know i mean my camping i think i said earlier you know i'm used to camping in the woods uh with my hammock a bit of wild camping you know without the bike um both times i've taken the bike i've ended up in slightly odd situations and i thought the uh car park was going to be a good idea but i've revised that now i don't think it's a good idea um I, I, but I don't know what the solution is so any tips from you guys on um, how you do things uh, let me know uh, I'm obviously now riding back um, I've got an early start it's not even seven o'clock yet um, I just wanted to uh, move on I've been awake since about four when the when it started getting light so I'm heading back Thank you for watching, um, thank you to my subscribers and obviously a very special thanks uh, on this video to those that subscribed getting me to the thousand subscriber mark. This video is, is dedicated to you guys in a way but you know if you weren't one of those first thousand don't worry I will have more specials and adventures and things coming um, which will be all about you guys. Um, Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do uh, hit the thumbs up button, uh, comment and say hello. And uh, yeah, I will catch you for the next one. But what a wonderful morning to be riding back. Look at it. I mean, look at that. Stunning. I quite like a bit of mist in the morning when the sun's coming through it. So um, yeah, empty roads, music's gonna be on. And we are going to have some uh, some fun. But yeah, cheers. <laughs>